like with pretty much anything else in Christianity, being a servant starts with the mind. It's more important about what's going on in here than what you're doing and how you go about it. God is much more interested in motives than in particular actions. He's more impressed by a heart that wants to serve and is getting in and having a go rather than the quality of the work. That's just the way it is. In Philippians chapter 2, we're told this. If there's any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any affection or mercy, make my joy complete by thinking the same way, having the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look not only to their own interests, but also to the interests of others. Adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus, who, existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited, but instead he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity, and when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that's above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And he goes on to talk about shining as stars in the universe as we hold out the word of life that we uh, work out our salvation in fear and trembling, that not that we're fear that we're going to, going to be saved, but that we, we just love God so much and we're in awe of him and uh, we, we want to see that tra transform our hearts and our lives for God's glory and service. And interestingly, at the end of the chapter, he goes on to talk about two particular people, uh, about Timothy and about Epaphroditus. Uh, Timothy, he says, this is just really interesting as a case study. I hope in the Lord to send Timothy to you soon so that I too may be encouraged by news about you. For I have no one else like-minded who would genuinely care about your interests. All seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know his proven character because he has served with me in the gospel ministry like a son with a father. Therefore, I hope to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. I'm confident in the Lord that I myself will also come too soon. And, and, and so Timothy is this wonderful example of someone who has taken on exactly that attitude of a servant, that mindset that puts other people's interests first. And I want to just draw out uh, five things about the mindset of a servant. This is the kind of heart the kind of attitude, the kind of motivation that God is after and driving us towards. And as we see the gospel and see the model of Jesus and also understand that he saved us for a life of service, then we will take on these characteristics. And so first of all, servants think more about others than about themselves. You see that in Philippians 2, just there in what we read. And that's exactly what he says, isn't it? Uh, that you should do nothing out of selfish ambition, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. And that's going to influence everything you do. You think, well, their needs are more important than mine. I will do them first. That is service, uh, according to God, is not self-seeking. Lots of things can look like service. You can get involved in church activities and, 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 and up front behind the scenes for selfish reasons. Uh, and that's not real service. It's not the service that God's talking about. Uh, you can do it for admiration so that people pat you on the back and say, wow, well, well done, that was really terrific about that. And so it's kind of an ego trip. You can do it as a means to get your own goals and, and things out of the way so that you can use you know, the church resources and photocopiers to do your own stuff. And so you kind of ingratiate yourself in by doing some things, but in order to get your own way. Uh, and some people do it as a bargaining chip with God. I've done all these things with you, God, so you owe me now, right? And so this issue that I'm facing or the, the, the sickness that a loved one has, you owe me, God. And so they, they've been saving up these chips, but that's not the attitude of the servant. A servant doesn't uh, thinks more about others than about themselves. Right, that's not an attitude. Uh, so that's the attitude that God loves, not the other attitude of uh, bargaining with him, of admiration and seeking our goals. 
Second part of the mindset of a servant is that servants, they think like stewards rather than owners. They, uh, they, they don't think of everything as theirs. They think of it as God's stuff, God's home, God's time, God's money that I've got to use for his glory. God's the one who owns it all. And he, had, you know, he, he gave Adam and Eve the Garden of Eden and the earth to work and take care of it. But as stewards, they, they, they might have thought of it as their home and their stuff and done it their way. But no, 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 they were stewards. Uh, and that's how they treated it. We've been entrusted by God with his estate uh, or part of his estate uh, with the resources and things that we have, uh, the time that we have. And one of the biggest issues I think Christians are facing uh, particularly in the West and in Australia and England, is, is the issue of money. Jesus said in, in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 41 in the Sermon on the Mount, you cannot serve both God and money. It's not that you should not serve both God and money. You cannot. It's impossible because one will be your master and you'll, you won't serve the other. If uh, Jesus is your master, then money will serve you, uh, and it's good. But if money is your master, you will be its slave. And so that's just part of the thing. I mean, it's also true of time and our homes and our possessions and things. Whose are they? Are they yours or are they God's? If they're God's, then your mindset will be, how can I, as a steward, use these assets, use this time, use this money for God's purposes and to serve other people. The third part of the mindset of a servant that God uh, wants to instill in us is that servants think much more about what they are doing than about what others are doing. Right? It's easy to become very resentful of others and think, well, I'm doing this stuff and what are those lazy bums doing? You know? <laughs> or to be jealous of others and think, well, they have this time and how come they get to go over there and I'm doing this thing here, I'm, I'm still mowing the church lawns or whatever it might happen to be. But, but true servants, the true servant mindset doesn't compare and criticize and compete. They're too busy and too interested in God's work that God's given them to do than, than bothering with all of that. Uh, it's not, they're not petty. They don't resent uh, others. They, they, uh, they have the attitude, well, God, they're God's servants, those other people, and God's the one who's going to evaluate their work. Romans 14:4, 4, uh, we read about that. That you know, don't worry about others, but leave it to God to judge His own servants. Uh, Romans uh, 14, verse 4. Um, uh, sorry, that's the wrong chapter. Romans 14, verse 4. 4. Uh, Who are you to judge another household servants? Uh, before his own Lord, he stands or falls, and he will stand because the Lord is able to make you stand. And so. You know, let God worry about those who uh, are maybe not living out the mindset yourselves. You worry about you doing the right thing and having the right mindset and about the work that God's given you to do. The fourth uh, mindset, attitude, motivation that God wants to instill in us as his servants is that his servants, through servants, see their identity in Jesus Christ. Uh, they remember that they're loved and accepted by grace, that they're not trying to prove their worth to God. Uh, and because of that, uh, that understanding of that we've got everything and we're treasured by Heavenly Father and valued as His servants, uh, that there's nothing beneath us that we won't do, you know, if it's cleaning the toilets or so on, scrubbing them out. Um, you know, there's often a mess on Sundays and stuff and, you know, the staff just come around and, and clean it all out. It's just, you do it and, and it's a, actually it's a joy to do it sometimes, not that the cleaning toilets is a joy, but but looking after things for people's sake and benefit uh, to, to further the ministry and make it easier for the next people coming in. That's a right kind of mindset. Uh, so servants base their identity in Jesus Christ and let that shape everything about them. They don't need plaques on the wall. They don't need awards to validate them. They don't insist on using titles that they could be 
um, they could be using in order to make themselves look more important and greater. No, they just, they put their value in Christ and they get on with doing his work. The fifth and last mindset attitude of a servant, according to God, uh, is that they think of ministry as an opportunity rather than an obligation. Um, that they enjoy helping people, that they want God to be glorified, and they, they're just glad to be involved and to help out in whatever way they can, whether it's leading or whether it's assisting or whether it's behind the scenes, they're just going to get involved and, and it's their joy to see it. Um, God wants us to have a joyful mindset as uh, we go about stuff. Uh, Psalm 100, if I could just flip back to there, in Psalm 100 and verse 2, uh, we read, Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his, his people of his pasture. And so serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Serve the Lord with gladness. That's the attitude. That's the mindset. Um, we, we, you know, uh, the true servants, because if they're serving the Lord with gladness and it's, a, it's an opportunity rather than an obligation, they're not thinking, well, if I put in my five years now, I'll be done and stuff and no one can complain about it. And then I'll, re I'll retire from doing anything for anyone and I can get about my own life because I fulfill my obligation. No, no, no. The, the only really happy people are the ones who have learned to serve. Uh, Albert Schweitzer said that uh, once upon a time. And so have you got this servant mindset that God's calling to? That, I mean, that's the mindset of the Lord Jesus Christ when he said he came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for money. He calls us to lose our life for him in the gospel. And this is the mindset that he's interested in that we think more about others than about ourselves, that we think of like that we think of ourselves as stewards, not as owners, that we, we think about our own work more than we think about other people's work and what they're doing or not doing. We put our identity in the Lord Jesus Christ and we think of ministry as an opportunity rather than an obligation because we want to glorify our Father in heaven. Let's pray uh, as we think about this. It's hard stuff, isn't it? Uh, but, you know, do I want to be served or to serve? Um, what am I more interested in? That's a challenge that God would issue to us today. Father, we want to thank you for your word and the challenges it brings and the, the, the different way of life uh, that the world doesn't understand, that we might not have grown up with, that we think is counterintuitive that true joy, life and satisfaction is found in serving you and serving others. We pray that you'll help us to put on this mindset of Jesus Christ, to be motivated to put you first and to honour you and to humble ourselves before others and put their interests first. We pray, please, that you, we wouldn't get caught up in resentment and bitterness uh, about other people, but you'd help us to get on and enjoy life with our identity in you, knowing that our life is secure in you and that nothing is beneath us and that we can get on doing things out of joy, out of wanting to glorify you, out of love for other people. Please help us to be like that. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for another devotion tomorrow.